Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Since Walking Dead isn't back for the next eight weeks, I thought for my first bonus video, it'd be fun to rank all the episodes that we've had so far. There were some inconsistencies in the pacing between episodes, so I'll explain why each episode landed where it did. Just a reminder, the actual date that it's coming back is February 8th, so you can start your countdown now. And since we do have all that time, I'm taking requests for bonus videos, so drop all your info bombs down in the comments, anything you guys want to talk about. Just overall, I thought the first half of Season 5 was vastly better than most of Season 4. Most of that is due to what was going on with the characters. I mean, I totally don't mind them not doing explosions all the time, as long as they're doing really strong character moments that I can fall in love with. I try to look for moments to fall in love with, you know, I try not to get too caught up in the big twists. So like, Pervert Eugene, so much more fun to me than giant explosions. So just general spoiler warning for everything through the first half of the season. But starting off, number 8, Slabtown. Episode 4, also known as the Beth episode. Even Game of Thrones cannot top itself every single week in terms of people's body parts getting eaten in front of them. So this is at the bottom of the list just because the tone is so inconsistent with the first three episodes and then everything after it. It's like an island in a sea of crazy action. But unlike the governor last year, Beth or Emily Kinney, if you want to think about it that way, just does not have the ability to hold screen time like David Morrissey. Like the reason why the Governor episode was so fascinating last year was because we were seeing the evil king in exile. And regardless of what you thought of his character arc, he was one of the more interesting villains. I think, say, if Beth's episode had been a Carol episode instead, if it had just focused on Carol exclusively and maybe explained Beth with a few scenes, it would have ranked way higher on my list. Carol and Michonne, typically people that you think about first when you think of interesting female characters. And yes, I totally get why they wanted to do a Beth episode, but I feel like they could have accomplished their goal of explaining her story without having to lean so hard on such a weak character. And when I say Beth is weak, I'm not talking about physically weak, I just mean underdeveloped. She just lacks some of the complexities of Carol and Michonne. There was almost no pathos visible in Emily Kinney's performance. If she'd had another season, maybe she'd have gotten there. Maybe not. That's up to opinion. It felt like they were putting her on the path whenever she had those Daryl episodes during Season 4. Middle Finger Crossbow Beth, vastly more interesting than Season 2 and Season 3 Beth. The only reason I think they killed her character was because they needed that place, the hospital, to feel like a turning point for all the characters, and they didn't want to make Rick too unlikable for making him murder all those police officers. So, in order for it to feel like a threat, someone had to die, and she just happened to be at the top of the list. Just as a side tangent though, I don't think that the governor or Shane, for that matter, would have gone to the hospital to rescue her in the first place. Although Andrew Lincoln did speculate that if Shane had led the group, like if he survived instead of Rick, then they probably would have had a much smaller group, just because Shane was so willing to sacrifice people. Number 7, Strangers, Episode 2, also known as the Gabriel Episode. I totally love Seth Gilliam as an actor, he was awesome on The Wire, he was even good on Teen Wolf, which I'm sure most of you probably don't care about, but this episode was built around his character, and he is just pure walker bait at this point. Almost to the point where you're rooting for him to get eaten. I mean, I love the episode for being faithful to the comics, for doing this really awesome Gabriel story, but it was a pretty weak follow-up to the fiery escape from Terminus. I do give it high marks for being so faithful to the comics. It was interesting, but it was just very inconsistent with the tone of the first episode. If they hadn't had that big action set piece with the waterlogged walkers, this actually would have been lower on my list. And just to explain my logic a little bit, you know, none of these episodes were terrible. I mean, I even liked the Beth episode, but some of them are just vastly better than the others. This one just ended up being comic book fan service and a prologue for all the Beth stuff and the Hunters. Stuff that ended up being way more important for the season. They did some nice things with Gabriel and his church. Like it just felt like an opportunity for them to do a comic book story. Number six, the mid-season finale, episode eight. I'm sure you're all asking, why is this so low on my list? Mostly because it was like the most non-finale ever. It was like the opposite of the premiere in terms of tone. That first episode ended in like in this big fiery bloodbath, just scattering all the characters and decimating the Terminus group. You know, metaphorically, it was like watching a lion roar out loud for 44 minutes until Morgan came out at the end and cracked his whip. They just set the bar way too high for themselves. You just cannot follow that act with anything that's going to feel bigger unless you roll out the Saviors and Negan, and it's way too early for that. Plus, you have to consider that budgets for premieres usually way, way higher just because they want to pull in as many new viewers as possible. Blowing up all the evil termites, just a huge win for all the characters. Big victory moment. The ending of Episode 8, like the ending of the midseason finale, Definitely not a big win for anyone. So like rewind to season four in the prison battle, that midseason finale, they gave the governor this huge win. He got to destroy something that Rick and the survivors loved and rub it in their faces before he died. 
And I don't count dying as a loss to him. The governor definitely wanted to die in a really passive kind of way. Like, I think he was kind of glad whenever Tara's sister came up and finished him off. Like, I wonder if inside his head he was just thinking, great, this bullshit is finally over. Thank God. I think this year, I think this midseason finale would have been much more exciting if Dawn had been a stronger villain. But they were trying to be more ambiguous about her alignment, and instead she ended up feeling really ineffectual. Robert Kirkman did say that we're going to see a new villain that will rival the governor in terms of ferocity, and I think they just did not want Dawn to be mistaken for that person. And I also think that they wanted Rick to seem like more of a Shane. Like they just wanted to blur the lines between Dawn and Rick as to who was in the right. Number five, Crossed, episode seven, the lead up to the finale. Always harder to land the dismount than it is to throw everyone up in the air. So of course the anticipation was better just because you could still kind of guess as to what they might do with everyone. Plus all the Melty Walkers, just some badass set design. I don't always spend a lot of time talking about the set design, but in this case, the walkers were way above and beyond the call. Right up there with like the waterlogged walkers of episode two. Definitely my two favorite walker moments. Number four, Consumed, episode six. This was the Daryl and Carol episode. Little bit of fan service going on here, pairing these two up in such an intimate way, but I thought it was a lot of fun and the energy was great. We get this Carol backstory like I wanted, like I really wanted a Carol episode. Some funny Daryl jokes, almost too subtle to be heard with human ears, and just a whole lot of sentimentality. There are a couple big emotions I think go really well with horror drama like Walking Dead. Sadness and sentimentality, which are almost the same thing. I feel like they're places to take the characters that won't step on the world that they've created. Like this really bleak post-apocalyptic world. And unlike the Beth episode, there was some real character development. We see Daryl and Carol, both victims of abuse, learn from their past and grow in front of our eyes. The most obvious sign being Daryl snagging that book. Like it's him trying to be an adult and deal with his past. Like even if they didn't push that van off the overpass, I would have still ranked this episode really high on the list just because of all the Daryl Carol character development. I'm so excited about Carol in the back half of the season. Daryl's always been an interesting character, but now I feel like Carol is definitely going to be one of the rivals for most interesting survivor. Number three, self-help episode five. 100% Abraham's group and a whole lot of crazy Abraham backstory. True to form, his show version of the character, pretty close to the comic book version of the character. They kind of brushed over some of the details in his flashbacks, but they showed enough for us to get the message. Abraham, every bit as delusional as Eugene. Michael Cudlitz actually got way more active on social media this year, so it's actually fun to watch him react to all those Abraham moments like months after he's filmed them. One of the other big reasons this made it so high on my list was the Eugene reveal. Like the minute he showed up in season four, all the comic book readers knew the drill, but I actually forgot about that after the end of season four. I wasn't even thinking about it. Josh McDermott just hypnotizes you with all that mullet speak, which actually makes some sense. What Eugene says actually does flow from factual information. He just, he delivers it in like a way that makes it a billion times more confusing than it needs to be. That's the magic of the mullet. He really grew on me in this episode until he was rendered unconscious. Especially the relationship with Tara. They're like my favorite non-sexual couple now. The actors kind of described it as like a brother-sister type thing. The pervert moment, probably one of my favorite funny moments from all of season 5 so far. And no, I do not think that Tara catching him is in any way going to deter him from trying to peep on Abraham and Rosita having sex. Although given what's just happened, he's probably going to try and keep himself out of punching distance for the next couple of episodes. Number two, Four Walls and a Roof, episode three. You could also call this episode Fear the Hunters. I feel like it would have made a more legit mid-season finale episode than the actual mid-season finale. Rick and the Survivors taking the hunters down, Rick's machete moment with Gareth, tainted meat, such an apropos adaptation of a comic book storyline. Maybe the fact that they didn't make us wait for the payoff and killing Bob is what boosted this up my list. Like just delivering so quickly. There's something to be said for not making viewers wait for big payoffs. I do think it caused some problems for them in terms of putting the Beth episode right after it when the Abraham episode might have been a smoother transition from like the epic WTF to slightly less life-threatening screams of horror. And when I say that, I mean finding out Eugene was lying was that big moment of horror for Abraham. He was screaming silently inside his head. Of all the episodes to rewatch while we're waiting for the season to come back, this is going to be at the top of my list. The only reason this didn't make my number one spot was just because the escape from Terminus was like this 44 minute long scream of joy and terror. You know, you get so cranked up, you can't tell if you're really freaked out or really happy. Which is why, of course, my number one favorite episode from the season so far is the premiere. This is as close to a perfect beginning to a new season as you could do. The downside being that you make it almost impossible to one-up yourself, and you run the chance of everything after feeling like a big letdown. 
Thankfully, we got Fear the Hunters, Team Daryl and Carol, and Eugene versus Abraham. They spent all this time teasing Terminus last year, eight episodes building to something, and then kaboom, they just blew it up right after they got there. Of all the ways the writers have jerked us around on the show, this was one of the best. Just as a point of reference, the opposite of that, like the worst moment of us being jerked around all season, was going from Fear the Hunters to a Downer Beth episode. Let me know though, what was your favorite episode from the first half of the season, and how do you think like the mid-season premiere episode 9 is going to stack up against season 4's episode 9? If you remember, episode 9 from season 4 was the episode where Carl confronts the unconscious Rick for all of his failures. It's possible they could do that with Maggie, like they could give her that kind of Carl moment. It was also a big Michonne episode too. They haven't spent a whole lot of time with her so far, so I feel like we're going to see a lot more of her in the back half. Regardless of what they do end up doing though, one thing to get really excited about is that without fail, every eight episodes of the show, they completely reinvent what the show is about. All the characters will shift, the tone will be different, it'll be like watching a different show. So it'll be like a completely new story arc, which I think will get into Alexandria and stuff that I'll talk about in a predictions video that I'll do next. So be sure to subscribe to get that. Since I'm not going to be doing a Q&A for this video, I'll just announce my next giveaway winner whenever I post that. All you have to do to enter the giveaway, in case you're just finding me for the first time, is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Really simple. It's a $20 Amazon gift card. I just pick one random person per week. So don't forget, February 8th, Walking Dead coming back. Please leave all your requests for bonus videos in the comments. And right now, just if you're on your mobile phone or on your tablet, there's new links up here you can click on. And you can click here for my finale video and click here to catch up on Arrow and the Flash, which are gonna have their mid-season finales this week. So thank you so much for watching. Let's all high five. I will see you guys tomorrow.